Greetings, everybody. We should be should be sorted now. Yeah, it's a mono mic, so if it gets it reverted to stereo for whatever reason, if it reverts to stereo, you only get one ear. What's up, Encryptio? Wallow, Zarens, good to see you. All right. Well, we're gonna be doing a fruit tray today. Um, used to make a lot of fruit trays at I mean, two jobs ago. Uh, we did a lot of a lot of banquets and whatnot, so made a very lot of very large fruit trays, and uh, I learned a lot about how to make them and um, how to peel fruit as well is something that most people don't know how to do because it's not um, not self-explanatory. So we're gonna make we're gonna make a pretty decent sized fruit tray today. You can make them smaller or bigger, but I think everybody has uh, you know you go to a potluck or something and nobody ever knows what to bring, and then you end up stopping by the store and really overpaying for what you get, and um, you know. Fruit is one of the healthiest snacks you can make, so knowing how to make your own uh, your own fruit tray is a great way to go. Or just knowing how to peel fruit uh, properly and getting the max yield out of it is also uh, very good. So we're just going to get started. Uh, we have lots and lots of fruit here. Uh, we got watermelon, cantaloupe, honeydew, berries, pineapple, strawberries, oranges. We got we got the works today. Well, first things first. Whenever you do, whenever you do melons, you always want to at least rinse them off with water. Uh, melons are—they usually grow in or on the ground, so they're kind of dirty. You always want to respect the people that are eating your food as well. And uh, another thing is, when you when you cut or peel fruit, you're slicing the knife all the way through the melon. So anything that would be on the outside of the melon is going to go on the inside of the melon. Uh, so not only will it help keep everybody healthy, but it also um, makes your fruit last longer after it's cut. So you're not getting any bacteria inside of the fruit. Or I should say less bacteria. There's bacteria on everything. That's just just the way it works. Alright, well that'll start. I'm actually going to switch scenes here so um, we can I can actually demonstrate and show this. Let's not get too much water on my mouse. Alright. So the premise for peeling most fruit is about the same. Uh, just like when we did the knife skills when we cut something into a flat edge, it is the exact same thing that we do here. So we'll start with the cantaloupe since it's a bit smaller, and I need a spoon as well. That mise en place out of place. So the first thing you want to do is cut off the top of the melon. Um, every fruit's a little bit different, but you really don't need to cut off very much. You know you've cut off enough if you can see mostly uh, mostly the yield. I mean, all all fruit has all fruit has the the stuff you don't want to eat and the stuff you want to eat's in there. So you need a little bit more. That should do. Then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Kind of a weird shaped melon, but okay. Well, you see, I lost a little bit there, a little bit too much. Now uh, to peel fruit, basically what you're doing is we're going to skin it by running the knife around the outside. This takes a little bit of practice, but I mean if you mess it up it just takes a little bit longer. So, And once you get once you get the first slice done, you can see I lost a little bit of orange there, but it's not terrible. Uh, you basically use this uh, this line right here as the guideline of where your knife goes. And as you get better at it, you can take larger and larger chunks off. And obviously the idea is not to have any green uh, green on there. Now, how you curve the knife uh, ends up how much crap you have on the bottom here. I'll show that in a minute. Uh, I will say I'm very out of practice on doing this. I haven't done this in probably a year and a half. But I'll never forget. Now, some people don't mind a little bit of green on the outside, but aesthetically speaking, you want to get as much of that off as possible. Okay, so we'll see that I did not do a perfect job here because we got this stuff on the outside. But that's easy enough to fix. Let's go around the outside. The cleaner you do it the first time, the better off you're going to be. Uh, especially just as far as the shape of what you're doing goes. Well, 
that'll be good enough for me. Put all our rinds in here. Okay, so that's basically how you peel almost every melon. You do the same with watermelon, you do the same with honeydew. Uh, you can do the same with oranges if you want to get orange suprems or something like that. And you just cut it in half, and then just take a spoon and s gently scoop out the seeds. And that's how you get the best yield out of the melon. Um, when you end up doing like melon slices or something like that, uh, you know you have the piece of skin on there and then when you try to eat it, you usually don't uh, eat as much as you want to because you get that nice bitter, uh, bitter rind first. So this is just 100% fruit that you can eat. Um, and the more you practice, uh, the better you get at it. But that's how we, that's how we peel a cantaloupe. Yeah. Take a little more off there. A um, little trick for this, if you don't have a very sharp knife, use a serrated knife. A uh, serrated knife is probably the easiest to peel fruit with. It's not my favorite, but um, if you don't have a sharp knife to work with, that's definitely the way to go. So we'll do that one more time with the honeydew. Not a huge fan of honeydew, but it does have a very nice color for fruit trays. So once again, we're making a flat surface so it's not wobbling around. If you try to peel something and it's uh, rolling all over the place, you're going to have a really bad time. Basically sawing the knife, just little tiny movements like this. Um, you can push through it, but uh, sawing it I think works the best for peeling. Uh, the skin is inherently very hard, so uh, it, it's hard to just push straight through it. You've got to have a little bit of a sawing motion to help you cut. This also kind of helps control uh, where your knife goes, because you're moving it just a little bit each time you jiggle the blade. Let's see if we did a little bit better this time. Yeah, much better. Still missed a couple little chunks here, but no bigs. Only a couple little pieces of skin where I had a lot more skin last time. Just like riding a bike. All right. All right, so the same concept, you just cut it straight in half, and then we'll scoop out the seeds, and then we'll have something good to work with. The seeds come out really easy. All you have to do is drag the knife across, and they'll all come out at once. The thing you have to be careful of is your rep melon's really ripe. Uh, your spoon can actually dig through and pull out a good chunk of the flesh. So you want to be very gentle with the spoon um, when you're dragging it across does not take much pressure at all. I usually, go, I usually go around the outside like this and then get the little middle piece out and all the seeds should fall out at once. Alrighty. Just gonna go ahead and stack these up a little bit. So that sweet delicious coffee. Uh, you don't really necessarily use, if you're going to do a fruit tray, especially if you're making a day ahead of time, which you should be, because you should be prepared for your party or whatever, uh, you don't want to do bananas. If you, if you leave banana out in the air, they oxidize and look crappy. Uh, one thing you can do to kind of avoid that, if you want to do apples, is dip them in some lemon water or something like that, something with acid in it um, to keep them from oxidizing. But things like uh, bananas and apples, uh, you usually won't see on fruit trays uh, cut up because they turn brown really quick and look really bad. Fruit trays is really about the aesthetics of it. And I mean, you have a wide variety of stuff to choose from other than oxidizing fruits. Orange juice works. Yeah, anything with, anything with citric acid in it will keep things from browning as quick. They still brown, though. All right, pineapple. Uh, the top of this pineapple looks like crap, but you can use the pineapple top as a... 
You can use the pineapple top as like a centerpiece for your fruit tray if you want to. So if it, it was a nice looking pineapple top, that could be the middle of your fruit tray. And we're going to do something else. Same concept here, except for pineapple doesn't have seeds in it. It just has a core. So we're going to do something a little bit different there. Uh, obviously, it's a lot more uh, flat, so you don't have to curve your knife as much. The trick with pineapple is figuring out how far do I have to go to not get, uh, not get these little knots. Uh, those knots don't taste good. So it's how far do you go and maximize your yield. And once again, that's just practice. Took off a little bit much there, but hey. All right, need to empty, empty our bin here. All right, so pineapple only has this really hard core in the middle. Uh, the easiest way to get rid of the core is to cut it into quarters. Stand it up, uh, and if you look look in here, you can well, you can kind of see. I hope you can see on the camera. Maybe maybe not, but you can see where it tails off and becomes um, becomes fruit. Now you can eat the core of a pineapple. It just has a weird texture. So you just uh, take your knife, make your nice claw, and just take out take out the core. One one foul swoop, and you have a workable piece of pineapple. I don't know how many fruit trays I've made in my lifetime, but it's a lot. I was kind of the fruit tray guy at my two jobs ago. All right. We have four pieces of workable pineapple. All right, let's give my cutting board a little wipe here so it doesn't get all sticky. Knife as well. Huh. All right. All right, watermelon. Whoa, it's a heavy one. Watermelon is basically the same except for you really don't want to peel a whole watermelon at a time. It's just too much to work with. So, uh, most watermelons, even some watermelons are even bigger than this. So, what you do to uh, have a workable piece is cut it in half. Uh, the trick is getting it into two even halves, which is not easy. But, uh, what we're going to do here is take our knife and stab it straight down, and then pull our knife down, roll the fruit. This way, we're not going to cut ourselves. As I say that, my knife gets stuck. Roll the fruit with the knife. And then once you get through far enough, you can just cut through. Now we got two pretty flat pieces. Uh, we'll save this one for later. Now for the tricky part, this is the part where you can cut yourself. So uh, cut your knife in, get started. And the safest way to do this without cutting yourself is rotate your knife. Rotate the knife with the, with the fruit. And that way, that way, if you try to come through and just do this with the knife, it, inevitably you're going to slip through, and that's when you can get really injure yourself. So just uh, rotating the knife like this a little bit at a time is, uh, is the way to go. Yeah, the Pure Heart Watermelon is some really good stuff, Jerbear. Some really good stuff. This is the same concept. We're going to cut off a little chunk. I mean, I didn't go all the way through there, but it's really hard for your first cut to get it to get it right. So you just want to get one nice uh, little strip going like this. And that way you have a, a reference point for your knife again. Uh, Watermelon is one of those things uh, I would rather lose a little bit of the fruit and not have any of the white stuff on the outside. Um, watermelon rind, I think, is some of the worst tasting rind in the fruit kingdom. It's just really bitter and, and kind of, I don't know, I don't even know how to describe why I don't like it. I just don't. I just don't. Of course, that's personal preference. I mean, some people eat watermelon rind. Teach their own. All right, so now we have a nice, 
juicy piece of watermelon. I can already tell this watermelon is really good. It's got really good color. I can tell it's nice and juicy. It's going to be sweet and delicious. Okay, so now we have all of our melons peeled. That's uh, that's all the melons. Um, we can start assembling our fruit tray now if we want, and then we'll add on a few pieces later. But before we do that, I'm going to do a couple... Uh, Show you guys how to make a couple little garnishes out of uh, out of your other fruits, and then we'll assemble everything. the The actual assembly of the fruit tray is not near as bad as you think. Uh, it's just a very simple technique to to make it work. the The tricky part is making it look aesthetically pleasing, um, which just takes a little bit of practice and knowing what you're looking at. Oh, all this fruit will be eaten in the next couple days. I love fruit. Everybody here loves fruit, so that's how it goes. Let me find my uh, paring knife real quick if I can. Well, somebody somebody fandangled my paring knife. Well, I can use a serrated knife instead. Oh, sweet nectar. All right, I'm gonna take this. This works with mangoes and papayas, but uh, huh. they both have a weird thing in the middle. Anyways, what we're going to do here is cut off, we're going to find the round edge, and of course, got this sticker on here. This is more for looks or anything if you want to do a, a centerpiece for your thing. So we're going to cut off, of course it gets stuck. It's got a really huge core in it, holy crap. That is uh, quite amazing actually. Alright, we'll cut off the other side then. Alright. So we got... Got this right here, which is like a piece of fruit. What we're gonna do, this is the same way I do like avocados and stuff. We're gonna make a centerpiece out of it. We're gonna make little hatches going down. You kind of hold your knife like a pencil. In fact, you hold it exactly like a pencil and just make nice even cuts down. And then we're gonna go the other way. Yes, you can cut yourself doing this. Uh, it takes a smooth hand. Uh, the best way you can not cut yourself is try to position the fruit uh, lower, lower in your hand, so that way if your knife slips out, you're not slipping onto your hand. Also, these have a nice hard skin, so you don't have to worry too much. Anyways, we've cross-hatched the whole thing, and then you can just pop it out, and you have this really pretty looking uh, piece of fruit. So you can drop this right in the middle of your fruit tray, and it looks, it looks excellent. Yeah, it's kind of a waste of a piece of fruit, but it looks really pretty. And hell, you can pick that up and eat it. You can pick that up and eat it if you want to. It's not going to hurt anybody. So we'll do the same thing on the other side, even though I just kind of borked the side here. That's okay. Once again, it's just drag the knife down. This is not the right knife to do this. You want a sharp paring knife so you can actually feel and judge where you're at. You can do this on your cutting board too, if you're not comfortable. There's nothing wrong with putting it on the cutting board. Um, I've just done so many like this. It feels better. In fact, I'll eat these right after I get off the cast. Because nobody else will be like, well, how do I eat that? I don't know. Put it in your mouth. Well, yeah, it's just as simple as popping it out and you have this beautiful little flower looking thing. Alright. Put this, save this for later. I'm going to eat that because I love, love that. Doo -doo -doo -doo. All right, next, uh, strawberry fans. Uh, this one's pretty simple. I think most people know how to do this one. If you don't, uh, there's a couple ways to do it. I'll demonstrate two ways to do it. One is the in-hand method. Um, you peel a lot of things like this as well. Basically, what you do is you grab the knife with your bottom fingers, and you put your thumb here. And we're basically doing, we're going to do this. You're going to bring the knife to your thumb. I'll oh, just do... This is not very dangerous. It may look that way, but it's really not. You're going to cut almost all the way down. You don't want to go all the way through. And you can make a nice uh, a nice fan of strawberry. The other way to do it is just uh, do it on your cutting board.
I used to work with a guy that was really good at carving watermelon. Well, he could carve designs into watermelon. That's not something I've ever been good at. But you could the watermelon rind actually makes a very good art medium if you're good with a carving knife. All right, so we have three uh, strawberry fans there. We'll put those on the tray. Uh, next, we're going to do orange, orange, uh, orange wheels. Uh, honestly, this is the easiest, stupidest thing to do, but nobody ever thinks about it. And until somebody showed me, I was like, "Oh, that's how you do it." Duh, duh. All we're going to do with this orange is um, cut it into rings. I'll also show you guys how to supreme an orange. Might as well do that. Okay. Out, you ready? This is really, really tough. All you do is cut it in half and twist it. And then you have this nice, beautiful looking orange slice. My goodness. Just crazy. It looks really pretty though. So we'll do a couple of those. And I'll show you guys how to supreme an orange, though it's not really um not really part of this. I know it's difficult, but I swear to God, if you do that, you put all these things on your on your fruit tray, people will go, oh my God, it looks so beautiful. How'd you do that? But it's really that easy. The thinner you go, really the nicer they look. You can see this one. This one looks a little more clunky because it's a lot thicker. Uh, this one looks really pretty because it's thin. If you go super ultra thin on them, well, of course, I don't have a good cutting surface now. A little bit too thin there, Frank. Not a good cutting surface for this. You can go super thin. Uh, they just make nice little, nice little garnishes. Definitely a happy medium to be found there. I'll eat that later too. All right, how to uh, supreme an orange? Uh, supreme is the only the flesh of the orange. I get a little something there. Um, this is usually for salads or other applications. Not usually seen on fruit trays, but uh, once again, I'll eat those later. This one's a little bit more dangerous to do, but to each their own. All right, so same deal as peeling the the melon. We're going to cut off both ends. Make sure we get all the way down there. It's an interesting inside to that orange. Not bad, just weird. And then peel the outside. Once had to do 950 orange supremes in one day. That was not not a fun day of my prep world, but the food came out great. Okay, so the idea is to minimize any of this white crap that you have on the outside. The pith so is not going to look pretty when it's done. Not just salads. I mean, they're really delicious to eat too. It's just it's a little bit wasteful to do it this way because you're you're gonna you're gonna lose a lot of the inside flesh. Anyways, you can see clearly there's different segments in the orange. So what you're doing is you hold it in your hand and very gently uh, ride your knife on the outside of the white edge of the orange, cut in at a little angle, the angle of the orange, in the other side, and you have an orange supreme. Only the purest of the orange. And as you work your way around, uh, one thing you can do with the, if you do a lot of these, uh, if you had a reason to, uh, what you can do with the insides is make orange juice out of them. There's still very good uh, juice in there. But this is inherently wasteful, because um, you usually end up eating most of this stuff. But what you are left with is a pure piece of fruit, which is uh, very tasty. The risk you're running here is cutting through the orange into your hand. It might have a very gentle, gentle sawing motion. Don't want to be putting a lot of pressure or anything. Uh, definitely have to stay under control when you do it. And yes, you can do this on your cutting board, but I honestly think that doing it on a cutting board is a little more dangerous uh, than doing it in your hand. Uh, to each their own. So we have some nice orange Supremes. We'll put those somewhere on the tray as well. All right, so there's a couple little tricks for you on how to make a uh, good fruit tray. So what we've gone over so far is one, how to peel your melon. Um, how to make, uh, you can do this with lemons or whatever else, any fruit. Uh, how to make strawberry fans, uh, orange supremes, and these lovely mango or papaya flowers. 
that's what we got so far. Uh, now we can actually start assembling our fruit tray. Let me get all this stuff uh, lined up here. Clean up a little bit. Just almost threw away a spoon. That's probably not a good idea. Blood oranges are great. That's what I wanted. They have some of the most amazing color out of anything. Alright, we don't need our or trash bin anymore. We've done everything with the outsides of the fruit, so we have no more waste. Let me put this over here for now and get to the fun part. I'm also going to wrap up this melon real quick, or I'll wrap it up afterwards. Nice clean station. All right. So aesthetically speaking, there's a couple uh, schools of thought on how to do fruit trays. There's some people that say, don't let the colors touch, put all like all of one color on one side, all one, one color on the other side. I believe you should mix it up and uh, really showcase the different kinds of fruit. Don't you dare fall off. Okay, we got the tray there, good. That's grape. Mm. Mm, that's good. Okay, so, when we go to cut melon, I'm going to start with the honeydew, because it's uh, the firmest and probably the easiest to work with. Um, you have this big round thing. You don't want to cut this. Uh, we're going to cut this in half, and then we're going to cut off the ends. These are your little snacks to eat for yourself. Cutting off the ends gives you this nice, uh, well, a kind of flat surface to work with. That's the best way to go. If you have a really long piece of fruit, you can even go further and cut it into cut it into quarters. See, I'm not a huge fan of honeydew, um, but I will eat it. Okay. So you cut off the ends. This is yeah. This is all the stuff that you want to eat. Is all these little end pieces. That's uh that's yours. Okay. The trick here on cutting um the cutting the melon is to drag the knife through. It's not a common knife technique. Not something you'll use every day. But if you end up going through and trying to chop your, your m melon like this, like you normally would anything else, what happens is, is it sticks to the knife and pulls up, and then you don't get a, a good, uh, good portion. Still going to make the claw like we normally do. And you just put your knife in and drag it through. And this way it does not stick, and you get these nice workable portions. Okay. Now that we have that, really easy. All you're going to do is take it and push it to the side. And then you have a nice row of melon. And be very careful not to drag your knife. It's very s much safer to do it with the spatula. And you can put that on there. And we're going to do the same with the other one. Uh, there we go. You can see my knife's sticky because I didn't wipe it off. And now it's dragging out. As with most things, it's better if you have a clean knife to start. Uh, the cleaner your knife is, the cleaner your cuts will be. Okay. So there we go. Got two rows of honeydew, and then you can just uh, separate them out as much or as little as you want to. That is the beginnings of a fruit tray. Okay, and then I think we'll add I think we'll add some cantaloupe after that. Let's clean up these little bits as I already put my, my bin over. It's really just personal preference, that's totally fine to eat. Same deal, cut it in half, cut off the ends. Give a nice flat piece to work with. Now you see that's a recurring theme, getting a flat piece to work with is very important uh, when you're cooking just about anything or using a knife, because uh, having a stable surface to cut on is safe. Okay, same same deal, uh, pulling, pulling the knife through. The more you can angle your knife down, the better results you're going to have. A couple fall off, you can just put them back together. As soon as there's a little bit of weight behind it, you're going to have uh, better results with it not pulling out. Okay. 
Another thing you can do is when you, after the knife goes through, as you can put your, your finger on the other side. If you're going slow, you can do that. I don't know if you guys can see it, but put your finger on the piece of fruit when you pull the knife all the way through. Uh, that will guarantee it stays there. If you're having issues with a particularly uh, sticky or dry piece of fruit is usually what does it. Okay. Let me separate those out. Now what I like to do uh, is lay these over like so. Make a nice T section. And if a couple pieces fall apart, it's not a big deal. This is all going to get uh, mostly covered up anyways. But it's about layering the layering the colors. And now we'll do a piece of pineapple. Pineapple we don't cut in half because we already have that nice uh, flat surface to work with. Yeah, that one piece of honeydew isn't having it. It's okay. You can always take a piece off and eat it or uh, do what you want to do. But it'll end up looking uh, fine anyways. Uh, it's not really about uh, the perfect look on every single piece you put down. It's about the end result. Uh, you'd be very surprised how many mistakes you can cover up with uh, the really nice looking aesthetic of colors uh, meshing together properly. Okay, so... Same deal, uh, cut down and pull back. And of course, it's sticking now. There we go. So we get a couple pieces in, it becomes much easier. Put this right here. Just going to move this whole thing over just a little bit. Yeah, that piece of honeydew is not having it. What happens is, as you can see, the I'll show you right here. The base, the base of this one is very small in comparison to that. So this is more of an end piece than anything. Uh, maybe I should have cut off a little bit more. Time will tell. Okay. Same deal on the other side. Try to line them up a little bit, but once again, it'll all get covered up anyways. All right, I'm going to take all four pieces of the pineapple. I'm going to put them on the outside edge. I like the way pineapple looks a lot. It kind of ties stuff together. I mean, you have we have green, orange, yellow, red. I even got some purple in there with the blueberries. It's really just a matter of experimentation. Every once in a while you just throw stuff on there and you're like, oh my god, that looks amazing. Now that really just takes practice more than anything. Uh, you'll notice one thing we have done is there is no two lines that are going the same way. There's one line going this way with the honeydew, there's one line going this way with the cantaloupe, a line this way with the pineapple, a line this way with the pineapple. Trying not to repeat myself as far as the, the lines of the fruit go. Yes, blueberries are purple. There is actually no blue food in the food kingdom. Fun fact there. Okay, so we have our, this is our base for the fruit tray. We've already mixed up all our lines and done all that stuff, so uh, it's a very good start. I think we're going to put a papaya flower here, and we'll put a papaya flower there, or maybe it's a mango. All right, papayas have seeds, mangoes do not. Mangoes have that super nasty, gritty core in the middle. I should cover this as well. When you cut down these, what happened the first time I went the wrong way, uh, you want to go the skinny way. Uh, this, this part is rock solid, like a frozen potato. So you can only get a tiny little bit of flesh off on this side and this side. The majority is on this side. 
There is no truly blue foods in the food kingdom. I'm going to rinse off my knife real quick because it's got a little bunch of food juice on it. And it's getting kind of sticky, which is not good. Okay. There we go. Yes, did somebody say raw potatoes for dinner? Did indeed. Okay, so what what do I have left to do? Um, we got the watermelon. I think we're going to put the watermelon as a, a, a centerpiece and then a piece on each side here. So we'll get that working. Watermelon's a little bit harder to work with because you don't have a uh, specific shape. And in fact, some watermelons are huge and some are not. But... usually cut these in quarters. The nice thing about watermelon on your fruit tray is that uh, it's taller, so it stands out a bit more. Same concept. Uh, watermelon's a lot less sticky because it has a lot more juice. Now, there's a couple things you can do here. Uh, if you just want uh, these, we can cut this into two pieces. In fact, that's what we're going to do. Uh, you can see where the watermelon, it comes off at an edge. It comes off at an edge like that. So we're going to cut off these triangles then we'll have triangles and squares. So we're going to take these squares, put them right dead center at a slight angle. All right. Then we'll take our triangles. These are tricky to get to stand up and put them on the outside. A little bit cramped there. Nope. We're going to do the same thing over here. Now, it looks really nice if you do the big piece as well, but I mean, if you're, uh, you're doing a fruit tray, uh, not everybody wants to pick up a giant piece of watermelon uh, for, their tr for their plate. So it's nicer if you have a uh, nice bite-sized pieces. All right, same deal here. Actually, I'll just stack these up in the middle, lay these down. And then we'll lay these ones down the other way. Okay. Alright, now we have a very good start to our fruit tray. Mmm. Mmm. That's good stuff. Now, I'm just going to move this around for theory's sake. We have we have this nice line of watermelon going through the middle. It would be nice if we had a little bit on the outside, too. So I'm actually going to take these flowers and put them in the middle, and there will be a true centerpiece for our, for our fruit tray. And then we will uh, add a little watermelon on the outside, and we should have a very cohesive um, cohesive looking fruit tray after that. Yep, now we're going to sprinkle berries all over that ish. That's right. Okay, so what we're going to do, since I want triangles like I have here, I'm going to cut off the triangle pieces on the side, and then we'll dice this up and eat it later. The more shapes, uh, the more shapes you can provide, um, the better off it's going to look. actually stand those up so they look right, huh? Herp a derp. There we go. Good enough. Okay, there's a couple little things I could have done better. Um, one is I could have had all the watermelon going in one direction, so it kind of makes a circle, which didn't happen this time. But that's okay. It's still going to look nice. Alright, so then we'll take our little orange wheels, or orange twists, place those over the middle.
And we'll take some of our Supremes here too. Put some strawberry fans on the outside at the right points. I'll do that right there. And then our berries, which I've pre-washed. Maybe these aren't washed. These are the ones I didn't wash. Let's give them a little rinse. Uh, one thing with berries, uh, you don't want to put uh, raspberries or something on the night before because they will bleed into like the pineapple and stuff. This is a healthy sprinkling. So if you can take the 15 or 20 minutes to do this, you will be the boss of the potluck. As everybody else shows up with their, their pre-made fruit tray or chips and dip. And you get to look like a badass, because you know how to peel fruit. Alright, I'm just going to add a little mound of raspberries in the middle uh, towards these papayas. Stand these up a little bit more. We already have a nice flow of red, so this would be more just for eating purposes. Let's put a little mound here. Things are always going to look better in uneven amounts, so three, five, seven, nine is the way to go. So we'll go five, and five, and then we'll throw a couple right around the edge. By the pineapple, we don't want to put them in front of the watermelon, because that won't look very good. All right, I'll clean up real quick and actually show what it looks like. I know it's in kind of a weird place right now. Okay. Put this on the board to eat later. Any, any gaps you have in stuff, you can always just fill with berries or whatever else you want. But that is the basic premise. Uh, one thing I might have done a little bit differently is save some honeydew to put on the top. The green's kind of hiding, but uh, one nice thing about putting a color below um, where you can't really see it is when the fruit tray gets, um, you know, people start eating off of it, it actually becomes a little bit prettier um, instead of just being, uh, you know, a giant clumpy mess. So having a base color underneath is not a bad thing. It just doesn't look, it doesn't look as the, the amazing wow factor it would if there was more green mixed in. Okay, well, so there is there is our fruit tray. I mean, that's a big fruit tray. That's probably like 30, 35 people. Thank goodness we love we love fruit here. Um, thank goodness. So yeah, uh, that is how to peel and create a fruit tray. It is a lot of practice. It's not as hard as you think. Um, having the eye for the aesthetics of it, you're not going to make, uh, well, it's not going to look any worse than what you'd pre-buy in a store. That's for sure. Um, so the more you make them, you can make a much smaller version of this or a much bigger. It depends on how much uh, people you want to feed. But uh, like I said, good thing we love fruit around here. Uh, otherwise, that'd be a huge waste. Three to five, not 35. Well, if you love fruit, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Fruit is one of the healthiest, uh, greatest snacks for you. It, it cures your sweet tooth, uh, especially if you get good, like good watermelon or good pineapple. It's so, so delicious and sweet. But I hope that was educational for people. Thank you very much. Um, I don't even know what the material of my cutting board is, uh, to be honest. So I hope you all enjoyed that. We're right about an hour now. I'm going to end up, um, I'll just show one more time, I'm going to end up killing the cast and uh, I'll load up downstairs. And then we will get uh, get right to the gaming after I come up and uh, clean up a little bit. So thank you everybody for joining me. Uh, that is season one, episode two. You all are the best, and I'll be back. Uh, I will be back in. Less than two minutes, just need to load up downstairs, and then we will um, 
uh, return to the gaming after I take a break and eat some of this delicious fruit. 